Hi everyone, let me know if you can see or hear me at all. Um, I actually pointed my camera up today because it's not really glaring as much as it normally does outside, which I'm not sure why, and I feel like I'm sitting really low down. Can anybody see me? Hello. Sorry, I just now realized. Okay, cool. You guys can see me. Awesome. There's not that many people on tonight, which I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. I put out notifications and everything. Maybe tonight was some special. Oh, I think I'm. I actually think I might know. Well, no. That's just here. I just know that here, like personally, um, is like back to school night at our school. So I thought maybe. But I realized that that's not like an occurrence everywhere. It's just sort of at my school. Or like Kern County schools where I live. Okay, you guys, I'm going to give it a couple minutes because let me see right now. Yeah, oh, wow, it just jumped 30 viewers. There are people coming. I just saw it at 15 and I was like, wow, that's not a lot. And I look back, it's like 45. So um, I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. And the project we're making tonight is this awesome layout. Look how gorge. But we're actually going to be doing it with a different collection. This Songbird collection, I got it in from Prima. I got everything I needed to. But you guys should see our... Oh, you, have you guys seen my YouTube channel? I, I did a tour of our office, which is like where I keep everything. And we have boxes and stuff. And I put it in one of the... Or I set... I got my boxes stuff from Prima and I set it down. And I think that people started piling stuff on it. And like trash. Like if you throw one piece of paper and it, it covers it. And then everyone just starts throwing stuff on it. And you, people... We just throw the boxes in the trash. So I literally like... I was frantically looking around yesterday and today. I'm like, where's my boxes and stuff? So I, I, I'm using the Tea Time collection, which is really, really close, but um, it's it's really, really close, so I think that it will work fine. It's like, this is the, um, here's one of the paper sheets, and then here's like the uh, piece here. Do you see how they're pretty similar in colors? They're sort of like neutrals with some pinks and greens and such. So we're just going to be using the same product, but from a newer collection. Okay... And there's like a random bottle of Windex back here. I was actually cleaning my room. It's not, oh, it actually is kind of clean right now. I'm going to point the camera up a little bit. Okay, so it is all working fine, you guys. The video and the chat is fine. My hair looks really weird on camera. It looks super duper tall. Looks and sounds great. Okay, awesome, Rebecca. Thank you. And awesome, Kiki. So glad you got your package. Hi, C. Shelly. That's actually got a pretty cool name. I like your username. All right, you guys. So I think we're going to get started in... Oh, wow. Just jumped another 12 viewers. So I'm just going to give it just a few more minutes and it just jumped six more. I think. I can't really see it. I'm blind. I'm blind. Look at my high heel tape dispenser. That's a high heel. Sorry, I am stuck on... Okay, if you guys go to YouTube and you type in muffins, it's like the first video. It is... I don't know what it's called, but it's by this guy. And he just says these muffin names in this accent. And I love the accent. He's like, um... What's a muffin? He's like, cigarette muffin. And I just love the way he says all these muffins. So I've been like, everything. Like at school, everyone's so annoyed with me because I'm like, can I borrow a pencil? Well, I didn't need to borrow a pencil, but I just said it like that because... Well, I mean, I didn't need to borrow a pencil, but I was giving you an example. But I'm like, high heel muffin! And I'm using, like, the word muffin after everything. I'm like, it's just really funny. And one of his is like, Israeli and a Palestinian muffin! And I'm like, this is weird, but it's just so funny. He puts muffin after everything. And he's like, glass muffin! And then he, like, licks the muffin. He's like, ow! <laughs> Sorry, that was really random. Okay, let's see. We are at the same viewers as we were before. So I think I can point the camera down and get started, everybody. Let's go, okay? Let's get rolling. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to go over the tools. Actually, I want to bring it up a little bit. I would like to go over the tools and supplies that I'm going to use first. Is it okay? Is everything okay, you guys? Is it bright enough in here? I can't really see. I'm only on one screen right now. 
I just need to see if I need to adjust any lighting. Looks good. Okay, so first I'm going to start off with the paper, and we're going to be using the Tea Time Collection, like I was saying, um, rather than the, than, the, than the Songbird, but we're going to be creating the same layout, just using a different paper collection. And this one is called, this is a Tea Time paper, and it's called Charmeuse. And if you guys, um, you guys can pick these up at any of your local retailers, but I happen to be carrying it as well. So if you head over to my blog, I have information on there, but any of your local retailers, any of your favorite online shops, anything. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that I have it because I actually went and grabbed it. That's how I was able to get it. It was because I have it in stock and Rebecca knows how much stuff I have of this new collection. It's kind of crazy. She helped me at the warehouse when I went there. I was like... Um, I need my order, please. And she's like, you need a truck. Like, you need your truck right now. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But this one's called Charmeuse. And I'm also going to be using this one, which is called Chalice. And it, oh, look at how pretty these flowers are. I totally love this. Like, I think this would be a really pretty wallpaper. And the backside is a green. And we're actually going to be using the backside as our background paper. And then this paper is called Cypress Rose, and I love how it just frames it. And the back side is, um, has flowers on it, these little sort of rose buds. And lastly, this one is called Ken Kersey, and it looks like this. It has some sort of cuttable elements, and then the back side has a rose element with some sort of vine-esque feel to it. So we're going to be using those papers. As far as embellishments go, I'm going to be using this pack of alphabet stickers, which is also from the Tea Time collection. It's just the cardstock alphabet stickers. And the, this is a, one of the packs of flowers. So we're getting into the flowers now, and you guys have to ooh and awe ah about these because they are so gorge. These are the Tea Time Timido flowers, and this is item number 562540. I'm also going to be using some of the Au Natural flowers in 562687, which are super pretty as well. And I'm also going to be using these flowers, which are the um, 562533, which are brand new to my shop, actually. These are the Pearless flowers in Tea Time. I got some of the flowers when I went to the warehouse, and I actually just got a brand new shipment shipment in recently, so I'm still working on getting that on, and this was part of that new shipment. So these are 562533, and they're the little, like, little mini roses with some leaves. And I'm also going to be using this pack of florals. Flower Muffin! These are the Harmony Flowers in white, and these are 556860, and these are actually an older collection. They're like lace, super pretty lace flowers. And a package of bling, and this is 544560, and this is actually a quite old piece of bling. It's um, probably like one to two years old, and again, that's 544560, and wow, you guys, we just jumped to 77 viewers. Started off at 15 and jumped that high. I think everyone just sort of jumps in right when it starts. Yay, flower muffins, dolphin. Um, so that's 544560. And lastly, I'm going to be using some leaves. Even though this package comes with leaves, I actually just realized that when I looked at it. I didn't realize it before, but I think I want to incorporate some of these leaves as well. This is the first time I've ever gotten to use these leaves, and these are my favorite thing from the last release. I just never, ever had them, and um, I got them in uh, probably like... I got them in with a Kit Club package. I ordered a pack of six. Um, so these are the Vermont flowers in the color Oakery, and it's 553, or not the Vermont flowers, they're Vermont leaves in the color Oakery, and it's 553647. And they're like felt flower, they're felt leaves, but they have like beaded embellishments and really pretty sort of metallic stitching on them, and they're really, really pretty. In addition to all of this, I'm going to be using a couple of wood buttons, and these are just some random wood buttons, no particular company or anything. Um, I'm also going to be using my Prima Distressing Tool, and we just got these back in stock as well, and I actually forgot to put them on the website, and we've had them for a while now. I probably should do that. I am I need to write a note, but I'm not going to. Um, the Prima Distressing Tool and also the Prima Craft Knife. I am going to use be, be using both of those tonight, as well as a Prima Chalk Edger in the color Knotted Wood, which is a nice brown color here. It looks like that. I don't know if that makes it any better for you. 
And I think that is about all. Oh, we're also going to be using just a paper punch with ha which has a butterfly on it. This is a Martha Stewart butterfly punch. And a couple of c colors of Glimmer Mist to color up our white lace flowers. I have nougat and sand. And I actually want to grab just a few other colors here. Uh, I grabbed Sunflower, which is a nice yellow, and Pink Taffy, which is a nice pink color. So I just have four bo bottles of Glimmer Mist, and I'm also going to be splattering some of them as well. So that's one of the other reasons that I'm going to be using it. And actually, I need to cut out a photo. I forgot. Well, I didn't forget to bring a photo, but I didn't want to... I didn't want to get a photo because... All of our photos, it's so hard to find a photo, like, because all, we have all boys in our family, so it's, like, covered with Prima flowers, but me personally, I really don't care. I love Prima flowers, or, like, flow, flowers in general. I really love them, so uh, I would put them all over all my scrapbook pages, but I couldn't really find another photo that I liked to go with this sort of theme, so I'm just going to cut down a piece of paper to go with our, or to basically give you an idea of a photo and I'll make sure to write photo on the paper as well. Photo muffin and I'm gonna cut it to four and a quarter and you actually would need to do this with some craft cardstock because I matted my photo so four and a quarter by six and a quarter was what I cut my uh, craft cardstock as so basically this is my photo. Okay and let me just go ahead and write on there. I don't know if you'll even be able to see this. This is the photo. Photo muffin. And our background paper is actually going to be this one here, which is from the Tea Time collection. And this is the one with the pretty flowers all on the back side. It's called Chalice. And we're going to be using this for our background paper. And... Uh, we're going to actually cut apart our Kersey paper. So grab your paper called Kersey, which looks like this. And simply take your craft knife. And they're sort of like individual journaling blocks. And we're going to use them for layering elements. And I like to do this because Prima normally comes out with a paper which each, with each of their collections that is sort of a journaling block. Or it's sort of blocked off into elements of uh, paper. Or elements... If that makes sense. And you could leave some of them larger as well because we're really only going to be seeing the edges of these. But it's a great way to get multiple patterns out of one paper because as you can see there's a ton of different patterns going on here. Which is awesome. Okay. Cut muffin. I'm sorry. I'm stopping there. And they don't have to be straight because we're going to be really distressing them with the craft knife anyways. So it's not like these cuts have to be straight, which is why I'm going pretty quickly with my cutting. Oh, does anybody have any questions? I wasn't even really looking at the screen. Bad me. Okay. So I think that's probably good. No, I actually want to cut this in half. Okay. As you can see, I totally just cut that so bad, but it's gonna, it's fine, because we're gonna now use our Prima Distressing Tool, and we're going to use this little razor blade here. It, as you can see, it has a little slit or cut in there. And we're going to take that and actually run it along the edges of our paper, and it's going to grind them and give them like a really great sort of like ground texture. So you can't even tell it was cut off because it's so distressed and uh, sort of like frayed that you can't really tell. And keep in mind not to do this on top of black clothing because this these little flaky things come off. Oh wow, we jumped to 92 viewers. Lots of viewers on tonight. Viewa muffin. Sorry, I did it again. I'm trying to entertain myself while I distress my tapas. You all think I'm crazy. Hi, Tracy.
And you could create little like indents or dents or like really whatever you'd like to do. You, it does not like, I like to just like shred them completely. Making distress muffins. <laughs> uh -huh, Darcy. Uh, really, Rebecca? <laughs> Did she really get mad or was she like joking? Oh, that's not very nice. I would have been like this. It's your fault muffin! It's a fault muffin! Can you hear that? Did you just hear that siren go by? Look at this. Look at all these paper shavings on my hand. Yep, they're coming to get me. I've been distressing too much, and this is going to cause a fire. It's a fire hazard. Okay, I'm almost done. Last piece here. But this is how you get some nice dimensional layers, is because these kind of act as like sort of pop dots in a way because they actually raise your edges and don't keep them flat. Kind of gives it a dimension in either direction. Okay, there we go. I got them all and I'm just going to shake them off so I can get like some of the paper sh hairs off or paper shavings. Let me move some of this out of the way. Look at this little clump of paper. Alrighty. So, now we have all these. And we can quickly go ahead and paper or screen adjust. There we go. Um, we can now go ahead and ink them. And I'm going to be using the knotted wood chalk edger and I'm just going to go around these edges and just add some ink and I don't know can you see how this edge is sort of now has a nice inked edge to it and you can add like some nice inking just gives it a nice I'll show you a comparison like in two different pieces of what the inked ones look like compared to the uninked ones so this is an inked one and this is an uninked one so see how the ink one just gives you a nice little sort of edging on there so quickly go ahead and distress all of, or ink the edges of all of these pieces. And I'm just going to do it really quickly. You guys can take more time if you'd like. And you don't have to, you could recreate this layout with really any, um, with any paper collection. It's not just specific to the tea time or anything. So if you want to follow along or rewatch the recording, you totally can. So we have all of our edges now distressed, and I need to again get some of this paper off to the side. It's all fuzzy, and adjust, adjust. 
then we could start our layering. So I have this, which is our background sheet here. And basically what you're going to want to start doing is you're going to need your piece of paper that is your photo or like that's going to be acting as your photo. So this is my little four and a quarter by six and a quarter piece. And I actually like to start layering in the center. Well, I, um, well for this layout, the photo is based in the center of the page. So I'm going to start by adding two little pieces or two pieces of our paper right there. And that's going to give me a basic I, like idea, I guess. And then I'm going to start adding some smaller little um, layers like tucked under here and there, which is going to branch it out even more and give you a really great dimension. So I just want to put that piece there and I want to stick this one here. Okay. And lastly, I'm going to stick this one like right up under here. So in the end, you're going to have like a result that looks like this. And I, all I did was I just like basically added some layers of paper. And do you see how this built up? Awesome. So um, I, it doesn't look that great because it's not centered on here right now, but I'm going to start to adhere these together. And I'm actually going to be using some dimensional adhesive to give it even more dimension, dimensional effect, I guess you could say. So I'm just going to use a couple because I don't want to spend my whole class adding dimensional adhesive. Adhesive muffin to my page. So I'm going to stick some dimensional adhesive here and then I'm literally just going to like take these pieces and I know I'm going to have something sticking here and something sticking here and something sticking there and something sticking right about here. So you could just take all of those, peel the tops off. Okay, and then I'm just going to like realign them, maybe branch them out a bit more because I did want it a little bit more sort of sporadic, I guess you could say. And I'm just going to place them and you could just sort of manipulate it a bit if you'd like to get them in a little bit more of a placement that you like. Then you just have to like squish it all together and it's going to create this large sandwich of paper. And I'm going to add just one more little dimensional element over here, which is going to be this piece here. So I just have this majority of paper, and I know it looks really sort of strange, but this is how we're going to start our layout, like this. So after you have that, if you want to, oh, and I actually forgot a piece of paper. I'm going to cut that down. I guess I took put it off the side or something but uh, I'm going to distress the edges as well. I just cut it into thirds or like uh, one, I cut it in half and then I cut it in half again. And I'm just going to go ahead and distress some of these edges. You're not going to need to distress all of them now that I know, because now I know that, um, that the may or like I'm going to be tucking them under somewhere so it's going to be hidden one of those edges is going to be hidden anyways okay here ink the edges of this or you know I'm actually going to use the opposite side on this one I like this side with the darker color like the darky darkish gray color I'm going to stick it right up there and then I'm going to take these two little pieces, ink the edges really quick and I want to just create even more like layery texture. So I'm going to add a small little layer there and lastly I'm going to take this little piece here. This actually has like a really cute little heart in the bottom. So I kind of want to expose that so maybe I'll stick that there and then my photo wherever that went. Who knows where the photo went? Photo, where are you? Here you are. You can go right about here on this page. So go right around there. And you know what? I'm actually going to fix some of these layers because some of them are sort of odd looking. Okay. So that is basically how I start my more layered pages. So I'm going to take some 
adhesive and I'm just going to add it on and peel the back off. Stick it on. Then for like this, I'm going to add this here. So I'm just going to flip it over. over. And I'm going to add a couple of adhesives, dimensional adhesives. These are actually pretty neat ones. I got them at CHA as a sample from Scotch. And they're like actual foam. It's sort of a strange thing to like explain. But like, I don't know if you could even see them. They're like little, they're like, I don't know how to explain them. They're not like the thick, like really sort of dense foam. It's sort of like light, airy foam, which is sort of odd. I've never seen them before. But I really like them because they're super duper sticky. Lay a muffin. There we go. So this is, I'm going to be building the layout towards you guys. So this is sort of how it's going to look. And it looks sort of odd on camera, but I think it's probably the angle because it looks like good in front of me. And I'm going to cut off this bottom strip here. And I'm going to attempt to cut it straight, but knowing me, I won't. Good enough. So there we go. And then we're going to place our photo, our photo muffin down. Just adding a couple more. Okay, I promise I won't say that muffin thing anymore. Oh, this does, This only weighs as much as two pieces of paper. This is only one piece of paper that has been layered. Like, this is only one sheet of 12 by 12 right here. And it looks... Like, doesn't it look like there's a lot more than just one sheet of 12 by 12 in this little small area? And then I'm going to put my photo down just in like the general area or like where I'd want it to go. So I could actually go in and add my four by six photo on top of here since I did add, since I did make it um, a four and a half by, or a four and a quarter by six and a quarter piece. Just move some of the stuff. And then we could start embellishing, but I'm actually going to want to adhere some of this down. And I'm going to use a bit of a stronger adhesive and I'm, I'm actually all out of my liquid glues like yeah I was so I wasn't unprepared for this class but I realized like like literally like 15 minutes ago I'm like oh my gosh I forgot I ran out of hot glue and I ran out of like my beacons glue or it it, it like what is the word it dry it dried out I tried I wanted to just say it drew out because it sort of sort of sounded like I would say it drew out but it dried out So then I'm going to take this. These are like super duper sticky. Like I'm using all my CHA samples because I'm just going to make sure it's straight on here. There we go. And you can just plop them all down. Yeah, so it glued out and uh, I mean it dried out. It didn't glue out. And so I was left with no glue except for some adhesive dimensional squares and some glue dots. So that's all I need. Like that works perfectly fine for me. Uh, I'm taking some of these leaves, the ones that have the really pretty, look at how pretty these are. They're embellished with little seed beads. Isn't that gorge? And I'm literally going to just start popping them in as little um, additional embellishments. And you can see how much work has gone into this. Like, look at the back. Do you see all the little ex the little stitching lines? Like, these are hand-stitched little elements. So, it's always awesome. So, I'm just adding a couple of layers in here. I'm just sort of sneaking them in there, which is why you're not ever going to want to glue your uh, layers all the way down to the edges. You're going to want to leave about a half inch to an inch of space in. That way you could slip things underneath, which is what I, like, I always do that. So, that's like a big tip that I always give on all my videos or try to give. And I'm just adding a couple pieces there. And then I'm going to go with my flowers. So I'm going to start off with the uh, Tea Time flowers, which are the Timido Tea Time flowers. And I think I want to use the red one, like down here, because I think it's such a pretty contrasting color. 
do all of the other colors in this um, piece. Like I just like the pop of red. And then I'm going to probably go in with a brown one up here and maybe one of the smaller green ones up here. So I just pulled off a general, like what I generally think I might use on the layout. I'm just reading some of the comments really quick. And um, then I have some of the flowers from the Au Naturel collection, which I'm also going to include. So I want to put one up here, I know that, and I want to put one down here. And I want to use one that's a little bit different than the one up at the top. So I'm just going to start to layer. And I'm basing all of my elements in these two corners here. So these two corners are basically going to be sort of empty, but they're not going to be empty. But you'll see, we're going to fill them up with other little elements, which are going to create a little ensemble. And I'm adding some of these flowers here. And I'm just going to take a cluster and some of the leaves. Look, you get like two clusters of flowers. It's so cool. And I'm also going to be using some of the stems because I love the, like the Marian stem te technique thingy, if you know what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to start popping some of these little roses in here and there. Not 100% sure where I'm going to put them yet, but I'm just getting a general like idea of how much, how many flowers I want or how full of embellishment I want this area to be. I think that's about good for that. And I think I want another leaf over on this side here. Something like right here. Okay. And I'm going to turn my brightness up on my computer because my Mac computer just like dims itself whenever it wants to. And then I have some of these little lacy flowers which are super pretty and I'm going to move the layout over just a tad so I can spray some of these. So I'm going to grab a scrap. Here's a scrap piece of paper and I'm just going to lay a couple of these flowers out. Uh, I just want to use like four. I don't want to use a ton. And I'm going to use some of the Glimmer Mist. So I'm starting off with this Nougat color, which is one of my all-time favorite colors of Glimmer Mist. It's, it is one of the newer colors, but it's really, really a pretty tan. Like, look at this. It's like the perfect tan color. So I'm going to spray one of them with the Nougat. And then I'll go in with a little bit of a darker shade. And I'm going to use the uh, Sand color, which is like a little bit of a, a darker brown. And you could probably tell the difference. See the darkness? This one right here is the sand one, and then this one right here is the nougat one. So, and then I always, like, I just like to use the nougat one to just fill in all the little cracks on, on really, like, any color. Because it gives it a vintage sort of a texture or feel. And then I'm going to use pink taffy, and I'm just going to give it, like, a spray in the center. Because pink taffy is a super, like, neon pink. And I'm going to use nougat to just balance, balance out that sort of vintage coloring. And sort of blotch it and now can you see how it's a sort of a very pretty vintage pink so I have three different flowers there and then lastly I'm gonna use the sunshine color which adds a nice little bright pop of yellow but I don't want to uh, use a ton of it so I'm just gonna add a little bit in there and finish it with the nougat color which is a nice brown color and you could sort of roll it in your mist or just sort of blotch it in your mist to fill in all your little white spots on your flowers. So now you're going to have these four pretty flowers and I'm just going to heat set them with my Ranger heat tool which is super silent. Listen to how quiet this is. Okay, I'm going to answer questions. I do not have any muffins at the moment. 
And I'm going to just take some of our little lace flowers. And they're just so pretty. They totally add to our little ensemble of flowers that we have going on. Okay, so I'm just going to add a couple of them here and there. The pink one can go over here. And I think I want a couple more but I'm going to start adhering them down. So I'm just going to pull out like a huge strand of glue dots. And these are so strong that I don't even have a problem gluing these flowers down with my glue dots. So I think I'm going to start in this corner here. And I'm going to start with my focal points, which are the, or, or I guess my subordinary points. I learned that in art which means your background elements, which sort of are the leaves because they're in the background. So these are our subordinary points. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a couple little pieces here and then I'm gonna pull off glue dot and stick it on here. And I actually really like these. Maybe I should order some. See, this is why they do these samples to let you try them and then you're gonna go want to order them. I've never used glue dots before, and I know how crazy that sounds because, like, everyone uses glue dots, but. And then I'm going to start adding in my smaller flowers, which are the little, sort of, the um, perles roses from this collection. And I'm just going to take, like, this little flower and stick it right over there. And I'm just going to start to create sort of a little dimensional flower element. I have one there. And then I'm gonna add one here. So I have like a nice cluster of flowers going and let me see if I should add another I don't know do you think I should add that one as well I think I will add that later and then I'm gonna move these out of the way and add on my two leaves and I'm going to kill Two bird. Oh wait, two birds with one stone by adding it half and half on my glue dot. Very, very small idea. And then I'm gonna add it down. These leaves are just so gorge. And then I'm going to stick this one down here. And look at how pretty that flower is. It's just like a really, really pretty sort of like cottony rolled flower with frayed edges on it. Totally love it. Okay, so um, Juliana just messaged me and she said that there are a few chats on Ustream and that some of the people are actually not showing up in the chat. Has any of you guys have a problem with that? And that some of the girls are so confused and they're in different chats and such. Yes, did have, <laughs> you guys all had the problem, oh my gosh. What happened? So I'm going to add my three largest flowers here because I want those sort of in a triangular-esque looking area. Oh, so it put you in a chat by yourself. Is that what you guys are saying? Okay, I'm just adding these down first, or adding my little, <sighs> sorry, this got stuck on one side of my paper. Okay, and I actually think I might go ahead and add this one, and then I'm going to finish it in that direction, so. 
I'm going to add another flower up here. And let me see what other flowers do I have. I have this flower, but that one's just a little bit too big to add. Ooh, that's actually, actually kind of pretty right there. Maybe. Or maybe I can deconstruct it, can I? Or is it a rolled flower? It's a rolled flower. I thought maybe it was a lollipop flower. I guess I probably could still re deconstruct it, because I think that's sort of pretty alongside there. But I think it's a little too large. Maybe if I was to balance it out... Like that, maybe? Sorry, I'm just sort of playing around right now, trying to figure out what to do. Take a leaf, stick it out of there. Here, I'll stick it starting here. And I'll take one of our beaded leaves, and I like these beaded leaves. They actually have um, they they actually have the beads all the way around the edging. So I know I do want to add these there. So let's go ahead and add a little glue dot, and kill two buds with one stone by adding one glue dot to two of them. See, so I think like that would be nice, something like that. But I think I feel like this needs needs a little coloring. So let's go ahead and color it up with some sand glimmer mist or nougat, which won't give it much color, but it will make it look different than the other ones that are like right around it. So a nice tan. It's a little bit of a darker color. See how it just adds a little bit of darkness. But I'm just gonna because this is a this is a canvas flower. I can already tell. So it should lighten quite a bit. Hi, Juliana! We're talking about muffins! Okay, and let's go ahead and use our chalk edger, which is, where is the chalk edger at? Here it is. I just want to tip the tops of our, like, little frayed strings that are hanging off the edges. And then, I think I want to add it here. Does that look bad? Oh, I kind of like it. It's sort of pretty. And I could finish it with this flower here. Chat muffins! <laughs> I like that one, Darcy. That one's kind of funny. Actually, it was funny. It wasn't kind of funny. It was extremely funny. Rebecca, let's come out with a Prima resin that is of a muffin. Don't you guys agree? And we can call it the resin muffin. Okay. There. Look at these. Isn't this gorge? Oh. Super, super pretty. But I do have a couple more elements to add. And that is the title, and also we're going to add some bling. So I have a bit of blingage here. These are the, this is the bling that we're going to add, and I'm just literally going to take small little portions of it, and we're going to branch it off our edge even more. So I took like this large swirl, and you can cut them apart, which everyone, that's why everyone loves the Prima Bling, is because you could cut it apart, but can you see this? Um, did I break my bling? What happened? Oh, I don't know what happened, it'll go back, but I have this swirl here, and I just want to add it 
like literally down here, and I'm going to overlap it over the top of my leaves and over the top of flowers and just everything. You're just going to want to stick it on top of everything because that's going to give you your different layers. So I just stuck a little bit of bling down here, and now I'm going to go up to the top corner here, and I might actually be able to get away with adding the whole piece up here. It's actually a really pretty crocheted flower right there. So that'll add a really nice accent. But I think that I could just add the whole piece. I'm a crazy layout maker. Do you see how I just sort of add everything I can to the layout? And I think I create them a little too fast. Like I just like plop everything everywhere. I'm like, oh, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, and we have a couple of leaves which are from our Pearless flower pack, the uh, Prima power flower pack that coordinates with the collection. And I need a couple more adhesive dots. And I'm going to add a couple of leaves just here and there. I am using the Tea Time Flowers, Rebecca. These are all from the Tea Time collection. Look at how pretty this flower is. It's like a pink one. Um, uh, gosh, I forget her name. I always forget everybody's name. Christina, did you, were you carrying the kit? Because I didn't know anyone was carrying the kit. Carrie, I don't know, Carrie told me that there were no, um, there were no kit, or people weren't carrying kits anymore. Oh, no, I feel all sad. Yeah, because Carrie told me, she's like, oh, no, we're not doing kits anymore, you guys. We're just going to be doing, like, um, you could buy it at your favorite local distributor or whatever. So when I found out that I did, that my product was, like, gone, I thought I could just go ahead and do this because, yeah, I, I definitely, I have the sample right here. It's basically the same exact thing, as you can see. It's, like, the same thing, but we're just using the different embellishments. And this huge wood thing is from a different company that I, I don't even remember what. It, I had it for so long. And I just basically did the same exact thing, but I just used different flowers. And I'm going to actually take my little bottle of Glimmer Mist and just take the cap off. And I'm going to add a couple of splatters up in the corner here. And a couple down here. This is a great way how to sp fill up your blank space. So add a little bit of splattering. There we go. Then we can add our title. Title. What should we make the title of this be? Even though there's no photo. No, I don't have the bike because the bike is from a different company. And this actually, you guys, this layout here was featured. Or Rebecca, do you remember when I asked you to um, send me some of the Songbird collection in the uh, En Francais collection because I was going to, a magazine wanted me to use it for the stuff? This was the layout that was published in a Russian magazine. So um, the bike was actually a different element. But... Um, 
You could probably find them. And I know Prima has a resin bike, so if you wanted to add that. Muffins! That's what we should name. <laughs> That's what we should name our layout. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Where should we name it? Or title it, I should say. I'm going to title it right up here at the top. Oops, I sneezed. Sorry. Muffin! Muffin. Thank you, everybody. But that is the basic layout and how it is constructed. Of course, if you had a photo here, it'd look much better. Or it'd look more, more busier, I guess, or finished. But since I don't have a photo... It's not there. And I actually, if you guys head over to my blog, which is scrappyhappiness.com, um, I do have a picture of this layout, and I'll make sure to take a photo of this one as well and add it tomorrow so you guys can follow along. And um, I guess Your Memories Here does have the kit. I didn't know that she was carrying the kit. So I'm so sorry, Christina. I hope you can forgive me for that. Uh, I feel so bad. That was a class, everybody. Layered layout kit, or layered layout, wait. Layered layout. That was a class on layering. Just use one piece of paper and cut it into multiple sections and then ink them all up and add embellishments. And that is basically what you do. So let me point the camera up. Oh, play out. That is the layout, everybody. Again, this is the original layout. And Christina, if you didn't hear why, basically what happened was um, my product in my kit or that I ordered for the, I got my product from Prima for this class. And as you probably know, I have a, um, a web store as well. So I had all, I have, I put it in our, my, my mom put it in the stock room because she thought it was like a CHA order or something. And it just, like when there's a little bit of product in the bottom of a box and nobody notices it, they just start throwing trash in the box and then we throw the whole bin out. So I think it was thrown out and me and my mom were looking for it like everywhere, but we could not find it, which was sort of awful, but... I resorted to the tea time stuff because I knew that um, it looks something like it. Tracy P is our winner tonight. Tracy P, you are the winner. You get a lovely prize package from Prima Marketing. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for modding the class tonight as well as Carrie is away. I forget where she is. Is she in Spain? Or am I completely, like, thinking of the wrong place? She's in Brazil. Okay. Awesome. So thanks so much, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the class. I will make sure to put a post up tomorrow showing both of the layouts as well as um I'll, I'll have everything all of the information all the products linked everything like that i'll have everything up tomorrow on my blog scrappyhappiness.com um so that way you can check it all out and pick which layout you'd like and then purchase the products that you'd like as well i'll make sure to link them over to um a shop that has them in stock
So I think that's all for tonight, you guys. So sorry I couldn't create the original layout, but I did come pretty close to creating it just using a different paper collection, as you can probably tell. So thanks so much again, and I will talk to you all next time. I do not know when, um, I do not know exactly when I'm going to have my next class. Carrie hasn't sent out the schedule yet, so, um, just if you follow my vlog or if you follow me on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, Twitter, I post it everywhere, so just, um, you'll get a, a notification somewhere. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed tonight's class, and I will catch you all next time. Bye, everybody!